name is Nimi McGregor. I'm talking to you from Autograph The Lounge. Today on Tav TV's Word on the Street, we'll be talking about the ban on street prostitution, clubs, bars and lounges on Abacha Road by the River State Government. How does this affect the businesses and the people, business owners on Abacha Road? These and more we'll be talking about when I join my friends. My friends, my regular Chidima Hothead, and um, my chairman here, Mr. Victor. He's a first timer, he's a business owner in the city of Port Harcourt. So, we're going to be talking about the recent ban by the University government on street prostitution, lounges, clubs, bars, generally nightlife on Sanya Bacho Road, GRA Port Harcourt. How does it affect business owners? How does it affect the nightlife in the city of Pasapos? Mr. Victor. Okay, um, like I say, it's a sad, it's, it's, but I, it's a two-way thing because um, nightlife is, uh, when managed well, it, it helps the economy. Uh, and we all know we are trying to diversify our economy here in River State. But it's quite complex. I still mention the word complex this time around. Because uh, you find out that uh, some elements, meaning the girls of the night, they bastardize the whole thing. The street prostitutes. Yeah, yeah. They bastardize the whole thing and uh, the it did not make sense anymore trying to chase money, but at the same time, the environment is suffering from their excesses. So yes, it's bad on the economy, but we should just also check the other side of the coin. Is it really necessary at this point in time? So I think the bad personally spot on. Okay, before I call on um, Shilima, since the ban, I took time to make my own research. And um, I think um, the government in right thinking, you know, place this ban and um, um, it's a two-way thing, just like you said. It's good and if not well managed or not well, you know, orchestrated, it will take a downturn in general. What do I mean? Um, Abacha Road itself has all kinds of businesses. I call that particular wing that drew the attention of the governor, you know, to place this ban. Personally, I call it Times time Square. Now, what I mean Times Square, if you know where Times Square is, you know this is a 24-hour business area in New York. It's a 24-hour, nobody sleeps. Businesses are on 247. And that's exactly how a bachelor road is in Port Harcourt. That particular position. And it's been like that for over 15 years, as long as I can remember. Now, imagine a street prostitute that started prostituting 15 years ago. She probably has two, three children, daughters, born from different fathers. Probably have joined their mother, who should be sometime, somewhere around the um, 29, 35 years, and her daughter is already 15 or 16 or 14, doing the same business as she is, underage girls. Still, on the street prostitution, you find hard drugs being traded yeah. alongside. I think they go hand in hand. Yeah. You know, the, the nightlife has an ecosystem that sustains itself and it has bad elements as well you know it's not like 
on a general spectrum, you have um, nightlife as a bad thing. I mean, all the businesses you see today that are thriving were consummated and closed out at night. So, now that's the other side of, of the nightlife. After work time, work time. Yes, nine to five is not enough. So, you, you have your meetings, you have your business meetings, you have your to meet with your partners, to meet with your, you know, contractors and so on. Even politicians yes. close out their meetings at the wee hours. Now, still, before we go in again, if I uh, pick her own mind, um, the economy of the night. Do you know how many students work at night to earn, to train themselves through school? There's no enough you know, um, job opportunities provided by the government. You have no idea the, the number of opportunities, number of uh, um, 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 jobs, these bars, lounges, clubs provide to take young people off the streets and the work to earn. Now, if I'm thinking well, if the university government was thinking about this holistically, okay. they would not just place an outright ban. Now, now let me let me let me let me get in here. Okay. Please let's not forget these clubs in, in quotes and bars are not supposed to be situated in this part of GRA. Hope you know that. I cannot labor like we are young now. Cannot labor from now till our fifties, our sixties, and we build houses where we want to retire. And these so-called nightclub owners will come and be causing noise pollution around my compound. Okay, that's that's, that's so. A from good the one. start, yeah. they are supposed to just leave the zone because yeah. the zone was not planned for this. So. Okay. That's another reason why I say I support the governor for what he has done because I cannot sweat it out at, at old age. Somebody will just come and bring, as in users will just be around my neighborhood and they are and they are causing some shit around me. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. Um, GRA, um, government. Residential area. Is it government reserved Res area? Residential area. Res or reserved government area residential, residential yeah. area. Yeah. Yes. You see. Um, as a government residential area, look at it. If if we can look around, you see businesses. It has gone beyond, you know, purely residential. It's commercialized. You have malls everywhere. Look at where we're sitting. You have malls gracing the skylines around your GRA. It's supposed to be purely residential. So the government has already gone tilted a bit out of its and blueprint. Of Good. So, so um, the GRA has tilted a bit off its original plan as a government residential area. And GRA here where we're sitting is the most central part of town, is the melting pot of civilization. From here, you can transit to anywhere in the city of Port Harcourt. So that makes the business of nightlife, you know, tourism, really, really excel, you know, in this area. You can't take it out now. Um, the business of nightlife, if you ask me, when a town is bubbling and shuffling, it in turn shows that the security system of the state is on point. That the security operatives are doing their work and the city can be considered safe. So when you place a ban and people can't go out at night for one reason or the other, it now places you know, some bit of chaos you know, in the city. So I want to ask Chidi my question now. Um, as you you put yourself in the position of a girl that has no other source of livelihood. She's probably just had primary school education. 
in secondary education. And the only way she can earn a living is by selling her body. Commercial sex worker. And it's a ban. They've broken down your office. You can't function. How do you feed? What next would you want to do? Now, I'm putting you in a position of just cast your mind into the position of one of those girls that have been dislodged from, from her business point. What to do next? Shut down. 
to shut down. The, I drive through that route and I see consistently, almost on a daily occasion, you see media personnel taking video shots, reporting to the government to see that, okay, the ban is, is, you know, is standing. Now, I understand that these girls, these, these street prostitutes, no longer stand around that location. They migrated. And they've gone to other, you know, areas. And the government has still taken, you know, proactive measures to go around and chase them away so they don't keep perpetuating the act of prostitution. Now, these girls, these businesses, these um, um, drug traders, you see the ecosystem, you know, one thing um, services the other, one thing services the other, you know, and it has built, you know, a very thick ecosystem in that area, and the government, first of all, you know, tried to dislodge their um, stronghold. Now, I would have thought that um, when you cut off, you know, something, there should be a replacement plan. What I mean is, these people were human beings. Um, if you say it's criminal to do prostitution, it, you get them, you try them in court, and you take adequate measures, you know, to cut them off. But is it possible for the government to provide them with um, alternative um, job opportunities and all. These and more we'll be talking after the break. We're going to break now. Welcome back. So, to you, Mr. Victor, um, let's talk possible solutions on, on the effect of this ban. But I want to draw your attention specifically to persons, you know, that lost their jobs. Employees that lost their jobs. Employees such as barmen, supervisors, waitresses, um, storekeepers, you know, these are people that were already integrated in, you know, the systems. Maybe a club, a lounge, a bar, situated in this part of GRA. They were doing legitimate jobs, accountants, you know. What do you have to say about, you know, the effect? How it has affected them? It's a sad one, uh, I must say. Uh, it's just unfortunate that it, ha it has happened, especially for the, the the real hustlers, as in, I mean, the decent hustlers, okay? <laughs> uh, we live in a tough society. It's always right to make a plan B everywhere you are, no matter the kind of business you are doing. Okay? So, they should strive to get another job or learn a skill, diversify, which everybody is trying to do right now. And uh, we hope that probably in the next one year that many of these shops and uh, sports can be opened so that business can come back. But please, for the, pro for the women of the night, <coughs> Prostitution does not only... Uh, Man or woman of yes, the night, good. please. Yes, 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 sorry for that. The government should why, keep... Why are they calling men now? It was the only women, <laughs> the only women you see. You, you see can also see men. At, there, there you are, see there, there are at that particular are changing. junction on no, a battle yes, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you a short story. There was this day I was driving with my mom through that route. You know, this was around 11 in the night. We went to see a relation, one of our relatives in the hospital. So we're returning and we passed through that area. 
my mom was stunned. She was shocked to see tons of girls, women, dressed, standing on the road. She has never seen that kind of thing in her life. Maybe she passes through that, you know, route, but she has never passed that route maybe before seven or eight in the night. But that day we passed through that area around 11. What's going on here? Hey, all these girls? What's going on? I just see yeah. much, man. You don't see men. Just too much. The you only time you say man is you, when, you, when a man is trying to, could, trying to patronize. There are some men that dress up as women and stand on that road. No, this, this prostitution, when you say prostitution, is predominantly 99% women. So mm -hmm. let's let's keep it. 99 is too much. 99 is too much. <laughs> also 99 is too much. You know what I'm talking That's about. Changing. You know what I'm talking about. A man will not come and stand on the road what for a woman to come and pick. What about the that will stand on the road and tell you, pick me up? You know them. Uh, don't ask me. I don't know them. Mm -hmm. So it was the, the, the effect of this ban was more to the women, the women folks. Now, let's not argue this. Um, even the write-up and all would show you that, um, first of all, underage girls, nine years, 10 years, 11 years, practicing prostitution on Abacha Road was one of the key causes or key necessitators of this ban. Secondly, drug abuse, drug trading. So I, 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 I was, of the opinion that there would have been a more direct approach, you know? You go around, chase these prostitutes away. True that, but I mean, let's not create a blind eye. If I was the governor, I would, I would create an opportunity for these people. I would gather them. I would moralize them before taking them out of there. Instead of just creating an outright ban, affecting the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's the angle I'm looking at it from. Your opinion is, is on point, it's spot on. Truly, what you said is true. Your opinion is spot on. But I was on the, of the opinion of breaking it down. A lot of innocent people have also been affected in this ban. And um, I think in that area, the, the River State government was not looking at the ban holistically. But on a general overview, I think this ban you know, is a welcome development and um, um, street prostitution is on a downturn. Our state needs to be cleaned up. Who says nightlife must thrive with prostitution? Nightlife can thrive, you know, without street prostitution. So that's the angle I was taking it from. Do you have anything to say about, um, about the solution, measures? Say it again. <laughs> Gra eh? Gra Gra Nihu Potikinazu. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> because they will still come back again. Okay. Not, not now, maybe later. They will come back. To the because same to the same. Shutting down to the same businesses spot. around that area. Except you buy out that whole place. That, that, in fact, the whole of that area. Are you giving the government of Rivers an idea? I'm not giving them any idea. To start buying off the properties there? I don't know what you're talking about, but if you can buy off that whole place, it will reduce, in fact, it will eradicate all, all of them. Especially that they are, they are, they are I, I don't want to call it name, the name of the place, but they're, they're, they're warehouse, <laughs> just by the corner there. <laughs> okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Now, Mr. Victor. Yeah, on a closing, 
on a closing, really, um, for me, on a 70% scale, I buy the idea of, of the ban. On a 30% scale, I feel the, the outright ban was not you know, looked at holistically. So um, if you were the governor of River State and you have the people of River State you know, at heart and you're looking at it from a holistic point of view, what would you have done differently? No clubs in the area. It might sound harsh, but I am, what I say, I sympathize with landlords because I won't build a house in a residential area and I'll have a noisy kind of business around me. Okay, it doesn't make sense. So they should relocate, it's tough, but yes, clean up should be done. And um, sorry, uh, there, there's, there's actually regulatory bodies on that with regards to noise. If you go to the Ministry of Environment, there's, there's um, the noise regulators in the Ministry of Environment. Yes. You invite them to come, they will check the environment. Now, this is okay? Most of the time, if you go there, you find that they, they regulate their noise. Is it just about is it just about the buildings, the internal I mean inside the club itself? What about outside? What about the lounges? Play, playhouse. Okay, for instance, playhouse. Beside playhouse. People will park their cars, make noise, you see all these boys parking cars, my brother, in front of my property. In fact, sometimes these people, customers will just park cars in front of their gates. They are checked, they are checked. Anywhere you go to, you know, in this Abuja, right there in this city, <laughs> they may not call it, they may not call it Jerry. <laughs> <laughs>